What's going on guys, Andrew here. The UFC returned to New Zealand this Saturday night, headlined by Auckland's own Mark Hunt taking on the Black Beast, Derek Lewis. Now in my opinion, the prelims and the drags so we'll just skip right over to the main card. To start, we'll look at Tim Elliott versus Brad Wynn. Now nobody including myself gave Brad Wynn even a shot of winning this fight. If you remember, Tim Elliott gave Demetrius Johnson the pound for pound best fighter in the world. Probably the toughest fight of his career, ended up losing a decision. But Brad Wynn pulled it out, 49 second submission in the first round. That's a huge win for the Australian. One thing I want to look at is his ground game. I feel like it was really underrated. He defended early takedowns, defended the early chokes, got Elliott's back, and it was lights out on that. The fight after that was the Hulk vs Frankenstein, Kutalaba vs De Silva. Now that ended in a 22 second KO of the very first round. Really not much to analyze here. The Hulk used sheer power and force to steamroll Frankenstein just in 22 seconds. Now it reminded me a lot of Anthony Johnson just steam steamrolling opponents like Glover Teixeira. Now the next crap was Dan Hooker vs Tough 9 vet Ross Pearson. This was a great back and forth fight. Ended up in a flying knee KO for Dan Hooker. And one thing I wanted to look at was his jab. He established that jab early. And he did a lot of research, as you can tell on Ross Pearson, knowing his head movements every time he was going to lunge in for a punch. Timed that knee perfectly behind, behind that established jab, and it was probably my favorite KO of the night. His mouth guard flew across the octagon, it was crazy. <laughs> now the co-main event was a quick one as well. It had Derek Brunson coming off a controversial loss to Anderson Silva, taking on Dan Kelly, who's represented Australia four separate times in the Olympics for Judo. Now Brunson has a tendency to come up really aggressive, kind of arms flailing, not really technical, looking for the KO. Now he got that KO in this fight, but not in the same way he usually looks for it. He came out a lot more patient, was looking for an opening, found said opening, and absolutely exploded for the first round KO. You got a feel for Kelly, man. He's just kind of a good story and he got destroyed on Saturday night, but he'll bounce back. Now the main event had Derek the Black Beast Lewis taking on Mark Hunt. Now Lewis is coming off a destruction of Travis Brown, his sixth win in a row, where Mark Hunt on the other hand is coming off a TKO loss to Alistair Overeem. Now I know many people, including myself, were expecting a big first, maybe a second round knockout for these two big heavy hitters, but Hunt actually picked up the victory on home soil in the fourth round. Now this is a big win for the Samoan. He's coming off two straight losses, the whole controversy with the UFC and going to court with them. Now he used his leg kicks really well to chop Lewis down like a tree. That's one thing about Derek Lewis, he doesn't do well with leg kicks. He just doesn't seem to check them. If you go back to the Roy Nelson fight, he took maybe four, maybe five leg kicks max and he had to switch stances, screwing up his offense, which in turn screwed up his defense. And he just seems like they don't bother him, which they clearly do. He just wants to rip somebody's head off, which is fine, but it did not help him in this fight. Now Lewis was throwing a lot of crazy kicks and crazy switch knees, and that's all fine, especially because they're hurting uh, Mark Hunt, but I don't know, it seemed to gas him out in the earlier rounds. The fourth round came, he was breathing real hairy, he could barely stand. He just didn't throw enough punches, there was just too many crazy kicks and too many crazy knees, and it's just not the best strategy for a heavy hitter like Derek Lewis. So you gotta ask yourself, what's next for these two guys? Well, with Brian Stan in the ring, Lewis said this may be his last fight. He's getting married next week. He just doesn't know if he wants to put his family through these things again. So that's good for him. I hope he stays. I'm personally a huge fan of the Black Beast. He's hilarious and he's a great fighter. If he stays, I would say the UFC still tries to put up against Francis Ngano, whether he fights JDS or not. That just seems to be a fight that makes sense, and the UFC, that would be a money fight for them, and that's all they seem to care about. <laughs> or, uh, if he retires, then he's had a pretty good run, I would just hope he stays. Now, Mark Hunter, on the other hand, who knows what's going on with him. He's got the whole court issue with the UFC to take care of. Who knows how that's going to affect his contract going forward, or what kind of fights or co money he's going to get offered. Now I would like to see Mark Hunt take on somebody like a JDS or somebody like a Verdum, somebody to get him close to a title shot because I love to see Mark Hunt fight for the title soon. Thanks for watching, if you enjoyed drop a like, click the subscribe button too, there are big things coming in the future for this channel so stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next one.